Pen Mohammed Jamjoon is back from his visit to Bangladesh's Cox's Bazaar, joins us now on the news grid. Such a, an incredibly powerful report there. That woman you spoke to in that report, Mohammed, talked about needing more help from the international community. What help precisely are they looking for? Well, Foley, there's several things that the Rohingya are demanding now. The first is that they want to get citizenship in their homeland. They have been denied this for decades. They have been persecuted in Myanmar. So many of them are saying we can't even fathom going back unless we are guaranteed that we are finally going to be allowed citizenship. The other thing, though, is aid in so many forms. Mumtaz, she barely gets medical attention, even though you see that she has those burns that are still healing. Mm -hmm. She doesn't get any psychological counseling. And even though there are so many aid workers on the ground there that are trying hard as they can to get aid to these people, the fact of the matter is the international community has not stepped up, has not contributed as much as is needed to try to really meet the most basic needs of the Rohingya refugees. Now, the repatriation deal that Bangladesh and Myanmar agreed on is now on hold right. because there are no volunteers to go back to a kind state. That's right. So what does that mean for the people in Bangladesh right now? Well, look, it's a tough situation in Bangladesh when it comes to this Rohingya crisis because we must recognize, and, and the UN and other bodies internationally have said that the country of Bangladesh and the government of Bangladesh has been extremely generous toward the Rohingya. But the fact of the matter is that it is a political season right now in Bangladesh. There is most likely going to be an election. It's already been delayed once, but it will probably happen at the end of the year. And you have a polarized country. So you have a large segment of society there that very much supports Rohingya refugees. And you have a large segment of society there that is worried that this crisis is going to be ongoing and that people are going to be there for decades to come. And they want to see some of them start going back. So there is this political game that is going going on. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, because of that, you have government officials that want to see some kind of symbolic victory whereby they can say, look, here are some families that are returning to Myanmar. Right. But they are also saying we are not going to force them to go back. And because of that, these Rohingya refugees are terrified of what might happen next. So what might happen when they return to Myanmar, if and when that happens? What sort of assurances is Myanmar's government making 